Welcome to Hacking Arcade ROMs, Lesson 5, Part 3, Foundations of Assembly Language Lab. In this lesson, we will actually put to practice what we learned in last lesson's assembly language lecture. So you will actually see the assembly language instructions and how they manipulate rem memory and the registers. It's good to do this lesson very shortly after you've watched the previous lesson, so it helps make the topics and ideas sink in. In this lesson, we're going to actually put some of our own assembly code in the MAME debugger and step through one instruction at a time to see how the instructions actually work and how they implement um, and how the registers change and the RAM changes as instructions run. So to do that, we need to, um, we're going to actually use a Frogger ROMs. So we're going to extract the Frogger ROMs. You might want to just extract, extract a fresh, fresh copy if you've been doing the lessons um, because we've modified the, some of the Frogger ROMs previously. But we'll, do the, we'll um, extract the Frogger ROMs, which I've already done, and you should know how to do. If not, watch the previous episodes. And then we, we have to actually go to um, my website and pull down the modified ROM. We've just take, I've just taken a ROM um, of one of the Frogger ROMs, cleared it out, and then put some actual instructions that I've shown you in the, in the last lesson, which was the more um, academic kind of just lecture on how, the, how assembly works. And we're just going to step through some instructions and see how they actually work and what happens to the RAM and the registers. So go to www.arcadecabinets.com. Click on Resources. Find um, this section, this, this link right here under Lesson 5, Part 3, Creating a Free Play Hack, um, where it says Lesson 5, Part 3, Required Frogger 20.26 file. Click on that and save it to your Frogger directory in MAME and overwrite the old Frogger 26. Um, again, we're overwriting the Frogger. We're just using the, the, the Frogger um, MAME emulation, and we're just going to use it as a, uh, as a blank Z80 effectively and write, run our own code and see how it actually works. So you can close down your web browser now. And let's bring up um, a command prompt. So we'll go to the, the MAME directory, and we'll run... Main 64 Frogger debug. Now you'll see we get this error message, Frogger 26 wrong checksum. That's okay. MAME is just checking the, the ROM and um, it noticed that the ROM is different than the real Frogger ROM and it's complaining. And that's fine. It's going to still run. Um, and in fact, if you don't get that message, you haven't copied that Frogger 26 file correctly. So make sure you get this message. Okay, so now um, you're, you should be familiar with it from last lesson. The, the left side here are registers, our machine code, our assembly code, and what the um, associated machine code is. And what we have here is, notice these are some of the instructions that I showed you last class, last lesson. So let's see how they actually work. And this will help you um, really understand what we, we learned last class. Um, remember, if we hit F11, we can step, don't hit it yet, we can step through one instruction at a time and see how it affects um, the computer, both the RAM and the, the registers. Okay, so what we see here is our first instruction. This is where the program counter is. Remember, PC0000, it's highlighting instruction at address 0000. LD, which is load, um, A and $01. Remember, the $01 means literally the, the hex number 01. And when, when doing um, instructions in at least the 80 and in the main um, notation here, it's the number on the right will be copied to the thing on the left. Or the thing on the right will be copied to the thing on the left. So um, if we, after we run this, um, the number one should be moved into register A. And you can see register A here is currently zero, zero. So let's hit F11 and you see, boom, that happened. A is now 01 and it moved, the program counter moved to the next um, instruction. 
And so it's, uh, this one says load B number two. So B, which is zero, zero, is gonna become number two when I hit it, and it does. Load D, oh, or I'm sorry, load C, O3. So right now B is O2 and C is zero, zero. When we hit this, C will be O2, O3. I'm sorry, C will be just O3, okay? And we'll do D, the next one, which should be pretty obvious. D is gonna get the number four, which it does. E is gonna get the number five, which it does. H is gonna get the number six, which it does. And now L is gonna get the number seven, which it does. So remember, you can load into any single register, any 8-bit register, any 8-bit number, or you can load um, into a 64, I'm sorry, not 64, 16-bit register, like down here, a 16-bit number. We'll do that in, in a little bit. Um, so any register, you can directly load a number into. Okay, using that notation. Now here's the other notation, um, LD register register. In this case now, we're gonna load the contents of register E, which is currently five, into register D, which is currently four. So let's hit F11 and see that D goes from four to five. And it does. LD, L, H, L, so L, which is seven, will be moved into H, which is six, and it is. Okay. So that's the notation of moving register to register. And you can move between any two 8-bit registers or any two 16-bit registers. Okay. Now, the final notation for loading something into a register is this notation. And it only works with a register A. LDA and then um, you have a number, which is literally the address of RAM that you want to load. You wanna look up in that RAM slot and, and find what's stored there and move that into A. When we have it in parentheses, that means literally going to or coming from RAM. This means look up whatever's inside and that's the RAM address we're looking for. It will usually be either number or a register, okay? So this is literally says, look at um, the memory address four or zero, one zero, I'm sorry, one four, no, zero four zero zero. Look it up, whatever's stored in there, go to A. So let's use our um, memory window to see what's stored there. So debug new memory window, there we go. And let's just click in here at zero, four, zero, zero. And we see at zero, four, zero, zero is FF. So it's gonna look up, find zero, four, zero, zero, find FF and copy it to A. A is currently a one. When this instruction's done, it'll be FF. Hit F11 and there it goes. Um, so that's moving something from RAM into register A. You can also move things from register A directly back into RAM, any RAM sh um, address you choose. So A currently is FF, and this says load into memory address 8000, whatever is in A. So let's look what's in 800 right now. It's currently zero. Let's say zero there. So when we do this, A, which is FF, will be moved right here. Into, into RAM address 8000. So hit F11, and there it goes. Okay? And really, I, I said before that really computers, all they do is move numbers around, do math on numbers, do logical operations on numbers, and then make decisions based on those numbers. And that's really what's happening. Every computer program, everything you do on the computer is broken down to moving numbers around. For example, when you go to the, um, the internet and pull down, uh, you know, a, 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 go to a website and look at a picture, you know, you move your mouse to your web browser and your mouse translates the, the, the physical movement you do into a number and puts that into the computer's RAM somewhere. Where the computer realizes that to a special address and that realizes, hey, that's the mouse position. So that's where the mouse is located on the screen. It looks to see what's on, what the mouse is under, you find a web browser, um, you type in a website, which, you, which that, those letters you type gets converted to numbers, which goes down to the operating system and um, ultimately, that, that what you want to look up goes down to the network card, which turns numbers into voltages, which goes across a network, happens, you know, multiple processes happen on the end server. Those um, voltages come back into numbers, which um, the, ser the um, web server reads as a, what's called a URL, and those, those numbers are associated with this um, specific web page you want to go to. Um, say it's an image finds that image on a disk, moves, it, moves the data from the disk to more RAM, which moves to the network card eventually, gets converted back into voltages, comes back to your computer eventually, 
Um, and that image, which is just a bunch of numbers, gets written to RAM um, to some point to um, your video RAM where those numbers represent colors and, and you have a picture. So, and, and it's really all that's happening um, is we're moving around numbers, doing math and logical operations on numbers and making decisions based on those. Okay? So every computer is really, every computer broken program is broken down into just moving stuff around, doing math. So, so let's look at this next instruction, load HL 8001. Now, this is literally the number 8001. We're going to move into HL. Hit F11, and there it goes. Let's look at the next instruction. Load D into HL. Um, so this is loading the value of register D, which is 05, into the memory address that HL holds. And HL is special that way. You can all load almost any register value into the memory location that HL holds. So HL is used as what would be called a pointer into memory that we want to write to. Um, so here, D is going to be moved into HL. D is 05, and HL is 8001, just because we loaded that in there. So 8001 is right here next to FF. When I hit um, F11, D05 will be moved into that address right here. Okay, so let's hit F11, and boom, we got 05. So that's loading um, one thing at a time. Now remember, we also read about the elder um, command, which requires some setup. You have to load some registers first. And um, when you hit elder, it's going to do a mass copy. It's going to keep repeating a, a copy over and over and over. Okay? So here we're setting that up. And you're going to see this a lot in, in code. Here we're setting up um, LD. HL 8000, I'm sorry, A800. So we're literally putting the number 80, A, I'm sorry, A0, A800 into HL. When I hit that, it's going to go into HL. So let's hit F11 and boom, it goes into H11. Um, now, and remember with Elder, which we learned last class, HL is the source address where we're copying data from, and DE is going to hold where we want to copy it to. So I want to copy, what I'm ultimately going to do is fill up a whole bunch of memory with a certain number. So A800, which I'm going to switch my memory window, currently every, a bunch of zeros. You can see that this is actually um, what we're writing over is video RAM. Um, A800 is going to um, go into HL, which it has. Now we're going to actually, so here's the number, now we're going to actually load the address A801 into DE which is the destination address when you're doing elder. So um, CDE is 50505. Once we hit this, it's going to be A801. So I'm going to hit F11 and see it is there. Okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to load the actual value, hex 11, into whatever address HL is. And HL is A800. So it's going to appear here. So the number 11 is going to appear here at the address that HL holds. Okay, so we're going to shoot 11 up here. And it does. Now I'm going to load BC with um, the value 0400. Remember with the elder instruction, BC is what's called the counter. And what's going to happen is it's going to keep doing this copy from whatever HL is to whatever DE is from the memory address at HL to the memory address DE, then it's going to move, increase HL and DE by one. So it's going to slowly copy that number, BC number of times, which is 0400. Okay. So let's copy, um, we'll load 0400 into BC, so which is currently 0203. And there it is. Now we're set up. Um, now we can do the elder, which is going to actually copy from this address to this address. So 11 is going to go to the address right next to it. And then HLDE will be incremented and BC will be decremented. And then it's going to return and do this again. So I'm going to hit F11. And you'll notice that 11 appears here. And the registers change. So I hit F11. And you see now there's an 11 there. HL is 8001 now. So it's looking at this. It's going to copy this number to 8002, which is over here. Then it's going to increment everything and then decrement BC. Notice how DC, BC went down 
do it again. Goes down. These guys go up, and the number keeps going. You can hit, hit F11, and see it just keeps going across the screen. And that's going to do this BC number of times, which is a lot. Okay. Now here is where another useful um, main debugger trick comes in. Sometimes you want to run. You don't want to step through all this code one by one by one because this could take me forever. This is going to be um, hex 400. That's what. My math is correct, that's about a thousand. Um, I'm not gonna click here on F11 a thousand times. So in the name debugger, there's something called a breakpoint. A breakpoint just is you, you, give, you set a memory address and when the program counter gets to a certain memory address, it will stop. So we can actually, rather than hitting F11 a thousand times, we can just set a breakpoint here on 27. And it will do all the elders, all a thousand of them, and then stop at 27 when, when it gets to there. To do, set a breakpoint, it's very easy, just do BP set, and then the address that you want to stop at. So I want to stop here at 27 when all the elders should be done. And you see it's a breakpoint one set. You can do BP list to see the breakpoints and you see it there. You can have multiple breakpoints. And now I'm going to hit F5 and let it continue and you should see that it's going to load up all these 11s or it's going to go, it's going to copy it about a thousand times. And you'll also notice here the screen changes because we're actually writing over to video RAM right now. So here we go. Let's hit F5. Boom. Look at that. All these things have been filled up to 11s and now all those zeros have turned into A's. And you actually might see this when you start up a video game. You'll often notice that all the RAM or all the video changes. You'll, you'll like, it will go to certain numbers and then to a different number and so forth. You always have these weird screens. Have you ever wondered what those are? It's generally just, it's checking RAM. It's um, writing a bunch of numbers to every address in a certain RAM range and then changing the patterns just to detect errors. Okay, so there you go. Elder, you're gonna see this a lot. You're gonna often see Elder, at least at the beginning of a, um, a, a game, to actually clear out. Rather than write 11, you might write zeros to something. We'll see that in Frogger, actually. All right, so, and you also learn about breakpoints. Once you, if you want to get rid of a breakpoint, breakpoint exists, and any time it hits that address, it's going to stop. If you want to clear a breakpoint, you just do BP list, find the breakpoint number, so the number one, and then do BP clear, and then the number one. So breakpoint one was address 27, now it's cleared. I can do a BP list, and no breakpoints, okay? So that is loading. And most everything we do is loading things around. All right? Now I'm going to show you adding. So here we see LDA0. So this is we know what this is. We're going to load the number 0 into register A. Hit F11. And hit F11. There we go. It's done. A is 0. Now add is very simple. Um, add A, the number 7. So here we're going to add the number 7 to whatever is in A. A is zero, zero plus seven, it's gonna be seven. And remember, when adding on Z80, the results always go back to A. So we're adding A plus seven and restoring the Z rest results back to A. Hit F11 and you'll see A goes from zero to seven. Now we can also do add a register to A. And you can add any register to A, including itself. So I'm gonna add A to A and then store the results back to A. So when we take A, which is seven, add another A, which is seven, we should get 14, which is E in hex. So let's hit F11. Boom. Done. OE. Okay. We can also um, load the value of a memory address um, to A. And in this notation, we're using HL. So add A, the memory address that HL holds. HL holds. AC00, so we're going to look up whatever's in AC00 and add that to A. Okay, so let's look up to see what's in AC00. It's 11 currently. Okay, so we're going to add hex 11 to hex um, OE and see what we get. And that you get 1F. Okay, so that's adding. And remember, all ads in Z80s always go to A. A is always an operand. It's always a destination. Okay. Let's load 0 back into A. You can see we go back to 0. And then here's one that's used a lot is increment. You can increment any register. It doesn't have to be A. 
Um, and it, its increments happen a lot. It's like such a common operation that it has its own special op code called increment. And there's a decrement too. So you can decrement in the register. So what we have here is zero, A, A is zero. We're gonna increment it. It's gonna go up by one. So we'll go to one when we hit F11. And sure enough, A goes to one. We can do it again. It should go from one to two, okay? And now we can decrement. So we can decrement. We have two, we subtract one, we're gonna get one. Subtract one, again, we're gonna get zero. And um, so we have zero. And what happens if you subtract zero, one from zero? That's a negative number, isn't it? Um, on computers, if you, um, you tr subtract, um, at least in assembly, you have a zero and you subtract one, it's gonna be all apps. So we're gonna do it again and hit, look at that, it goes from zero to app add. That's, um, that actually is the source of many bugs in computer programs, is when people don't realize that they subtract something fr from zero and they get a negative number, which um, computer doesn't know what it's actually, depending on the, uh, the, the programming, it doesn't know whether it's a negative number or the number FF, which is also a positive number. And then, uh, no, FF can be both a negative number and a positive number, and you actually have to know what you're looking for and treat it respectively, and if you don't, um, that can be the bu source of many bugs. So sometimes you wonder, hey, how do computer programs have s bugs and all that? How did that all work? Um, that's that's one, one way, okay? Okay, so um, I said we can do logical operations. And um, you can Google or X or an and and know what they mean and find what you mean. We're not gonna do much with those, but I do wanna show you X or because um, this is a common trick that you'll see um, because it's it's short. It's it's only one op, one byte to represent this instruction. Rather than loading um, the number zero to a register, you can always XOR a register by itself. And um, actually, while well, in Z80, you can only ever XOR is A is the destination. But in like Intel, you can XOR any register by itself. But when you take any number and XOR it by itself, it is zero. So the XOR a is just another way of writing load A zero. So notice I have A here, it's FF, I'm gonna hit F11, and it's gonna go to zero. XOR anything by itself is always zero. Just, it's like a mathematical property, okay? And I haven't shown you the jump instruction yet, but often you'll want to change the flow of code. So um, usually you make a decision, say if, if something happens, continue on, otherwise jump. So jump JP, and then you give it an address. When it executes this instruction, it's gonna actually set the program counter to that value, zero, and it's just gonna keep, so it's gonna then change what, what code is executed next. So if I do JP10000, it's gonna actually go all the way back to the beginning of the program. So I'm gonna do that now, F11, and you see, boom, we start again. So now you've seen these assembly codes in action, and you should be able to, um, to um, understand some of this code and hopefully what we taught you in the last, le less, last lesson. All right, um, so now when we come back for the next part of lesson five, I know that lesson five is a huge lesson, um, we will actually go to altering the code so that we can insert our own code into the Frogger startup and give ourselves credits. That will be, the that will be um, the next lesson.